Good morning guys, welcome to another video by Antiques Arena. My name is Walter O'Neill and today I'm off to Splot Market buying. As you can see it's pitch black, <laughs> half past four in the morning again. But I'm having such results down in Splot that you got to get down there. And you got to get down there early guys. There's no point getting a Splot at nine o'clock at the advertised time because believe me, Dealers are in there four o'clock in the morning. When I get there, there'll be quite a few set up. Last week I met up with Steve and uh, he came round with me and I tell you what, Spot was so quiet, he couldn't have picked a worse week. I don't know whether it was something to do with the fact it was Easter weekend or what, but it was dreadful down there. <coughs> I still bought really well. You know, when you can pick white fryers up for three and three and a half quid a piece, you're buying well. Um, white fryers doesn't demand what it used to, but I can assure you now that is still really good gear. Um, and as you know, I had that pink in down here not long ago, the teapot, um, I've had some beautiful pieces. I'm going down here this morning and I'm on the hunt for some Chinese porcelain. That's my hope. Um, some sad news about some of my car boot sales. Last year, as you know, Kavailon car boot sale, which was one of my big boot sales, I sold it a lot and bought. They shut down early because uh, the gentleman who ran it died, unfortunately. Um, now, I'm not going to moan because obviously his family and everything, you know, God bless them, you know, it's um, terrible for those. But uh, they put a post out this year that they're not running the boot sale at all. So I don't know if that's the end of a 20 year long era for Gavilan car boot sale. I hope not, as I have a lot of friends that I to talk to when I go to Gavilan. It's been a big chunk of my life for 20 years. So I do hope someone takes it over, but my thoughts do go out to the family, and if they don't, then obviously I'll find somewhere else to go. Gethly <coughs> Gay, um, Sully, all of them, they all start back up this week. Um, so there's plenty of field car boot sales to go to now. Bear with me a second, guys. So hopefully the buy-in's going to be back to thick and fast with some really rich, superb pickings. That's what I'm hoping for. As you can see, there's an empty seat to the side of me again. No comment, guys. Um, <laughs> anyway, Gethly Gay tomorrow. Um, I'm really excited. I'm going to actually set the stall up, sell some cheap pieces that I've got, stuff that I don't want for the shop or the house. Um, I got enough of that to work all year, really, to be honest with you, where I've been buying pieces this year. And um, just for one item. I've had a lot of people come in the shop selling me you know, boxes of stuff, and I've looked at it and I've gone, well, I can sell half of that money and the rest will go to boot sale. <coughs> So I've got a lot of stock sitting there, so it'll be good to turn that into a bit of cash. It's free cash as far as I'm concerned. It's been sat there now for months. Um, and not to mention whatever I had left over from the work in the boot sales last year as well. Um, yesterday, uh, we had a gentleman come into the uh, shop, uh, Richard. Lovely man. I'll add in some photos at the end of the video, guys. He really was nice. He uh, was just starting out uh, collecting now. Um, he's a bit of a late bloomer with his antiques. <laughs> and he picked himself two really nice pieces of glassware from the shop. Um, of course, I worked with him a little bit. And uh, he posted up on Antiques Arena last night that he was super happy. So I'm really pleased for that. Uh, so, Rich, it was nice to meet you, mate, and uh, we look forward to seeing you again. <coughs> um, I must admit, when I started doing these videos, I didn't think anybody would be really interested in somebody going around the car boot sale picking up bits of tat or whatever. And yesterday I reached 1,300 subscribers, today 1,305 already. Um, I average between 5 and 10 a day some days. It's really, to be totally honest with you, shockingly impressive. I never thought anybody would be interested. Um, I, 
always looked at it as I loved what I done, but I didn't realise other people would. And after meeting um, a few families this week, because I've met quite a few followers that have turned into friends now, um, it's been an eye opener as to how people have been inspired by my channel or helped in one way or another by my channel. So it was an eye opener and it really made me feel really nice and appreciated and you know proud that I've done the channel. I know there's going to be people out there looking at it and think, oh, this crap, let's turn it off. And that's fine, I don't care. Um, but for those of you who've supported me, uh, got me up to 1,300 subscribers and climbing, do you know what? Thank you very much. I really appreciate it, guys. So, um, where are we at? Uh, as I said, I'm off to a spot market. Um, hopefully, we'll get some buys today. For a change, it's not raining. For a change. Freezing bloody cold again, though. Let's put some heat in on here. Morning is cold, I haven't even put the heating on. That's good, isn't it? Um, I'm hoping to get a few bits. I'm not, I haven't took fortunes with me. Um, my rent is due, my mortgage is due. <laughs> um, I got bills coming up my ears this week. This is my uh, dear week. We all have them. You know, I have two or three cruising weeks and then one or two really expensive weeks. So I've got a few hundred on me, but I'm not going crazy today. I'm there for some nice cheap little pieces. But every time I say that, I end up spending a few hundred quid coming home with something superb. So we'll see what happens. But I, my, in my head, my plan is to go and spend cheap. Spend cheap and take it back to the shop and get it sold. But I also, at the same time, I've got in my head what I want to buy. I've got uh, people have to finish glass and that is Finland glass guys, Ramaki and Lassie glass and things like that um, until it's coming up my ears. I can't get enough of that glass. At the same time I've got a gentleman coming in buying all my pub memorabilia and I can't get enough of that in a minute. So yeah, it's um, well, what can I say? I go in there with specific ideas in mind. Um, we'll see what we find. Obviously, you'll get to see all the stock when I get back to the shop. Um, and if I can, I'll do a little bit of sneaky filming in the uh, market while I'm there. But um, the one good thing about the car boot sales is, as you can see, I'm going down with one mindset. And to be totally honest with you, I'll probably come home with totally different stock that I never even pictured in my head because you don't know what's going to be here from one week to the next. Um, you really don't, so... Yeah, let's just see, see how it goes. Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave it there. And... Uh, we'll see what we get. And I'll show you soon. See you, speak to you soon, guys. Bye for now. Okay, guys. Um, so I've just got back to the shop now from uh, this morning. And um, that thing I said about it being dry is emptying down. Honest to God, you wouldn't believe how heavy it's raining out there. Uh, the water was running into splot and that's undercover. It was that heavy. So I think Bessemer is going to be a washout. Before I get to showing you the stuff I bought this morning, um, I want to give a shout out to Jeremy. Nice to see you again in splot, mate. Uh, we had a chat for five minutes, which was nice. I haven't seen you for a while, so shout out to you and your brother Simon. Uh, they have been in a video in the past, guys. Uh, lovely guys. Right, so, nothing stand out, jump up and down spectacular today. A lot of run of the mill work in stock. Um, one, one or two decent pieces of glass, but overall, just work in stock, okay? Um, so, we'll get started. large crystal probably bohemian um, basket or bowl now that was three pound this morning but you know it's real nice fine crystal <coughs> excuse me 
And no, Jeremy, it's not a cold, it's, it's the dust. <laughs> uh, um, I'm gonna get 15, 20 quid for that, no problem at all, so it's all right. This one here, I have no idea who's made this. It looks relatively modern. It's just a nice art glass bowl, nice colouring. I love the uh, the colours to be honest with you, the swirling of the colours. And I paid three pound for that this morning, and I'll chuck another fifteen quid on that just as a decorative art glass bowl or vase rather. So nothing special there, eh? uh, but as I've said, it is what it is. This, on the other hand, I think is something. Look at that. Now, I think this is early 20th century, around 1900, 1920s. It's beautifully hand cut. It's got loads of weight to the foot. It's stinking dirty. This will clean. Um, and if it's a bit of mist in and that, I can get that out too. I have done a video showing you how to do that, guys. That is absolutely spectacular. It's standing about 14, 16 inches tall. Weighs about two kilos of pure crystal. And it's perfect. Loads of weight to the base, authentic way. Um, no signature, unfortunately, but that's top quality. That is really nice. That's going to be £45 of anyone's money, maybe a bit more. So I'm happy with that. I paid a tenner for that this morning. Again, another £10 buy. Is another large vase, again, about 12, 14 inches tall. Beautifully cut crystal. But this one's Irish Waterford. Fully signed. Right by there. Don't know if you can see it. Fully signed Irish Waterford crystal for a tenner. That's a £75 lump all day long. Stinking dirty, no chips, no cracks. Beautiful, beautiful, large piece of Irish crystal. Happy days. So it's well over £100 just on those two vases there, guys. So they, that's not too bad. It goes downhill from there, though. But not all. Sorry, let me take that back. Let me show you the coins. I had some lovely coins, but they cost me money. I paid £30 for us three sets. This is the first. And it is basically, uh, I'm sure this was the Commonwealth Games, was it? The Balwick of the Guernsey 1986 coin set. But it's, as coin sets go, it's beautiful. The case is beautiful quality, the coins are beautiful quality. It's in mint condition. And we got the, um, what are we going? Let me have a look. We got what looks to be a silver two pounds. We got the 50 pence, the one pound, the 20, 10, two, one. It's a really nice set to be honest with you. Uh, I'm not sure if it's to do with the Commonwealth Games because all the other sets I've had are to do with the Commonwealth Games and it's the same year. And the Commonwealth Games was in Guernsey in 86. So I'm assuming that's to do with the Commonwealth Games as well. Wait, but I'll have another look at it later. But as I say, I paid £30 for this, this and the other one. Now this one here is the Guernsey Commonwealth Games commemorative £2 coin, 1986. And there we have the £2 coin. This set, I should have said, I'm going to probably put about £40, £45 on that set. I'll put a tenner on the £2 coin. And then we had a decimal currency set here. Cased set, you know, 50 pence and down, all the way down to the half penny. That's 10 or 15 pound on the shelf here, no problem at all in the shop. So what am I going to get? Let's say 45, 10 and 15. So about 70 quid for the 30 pound outlay. So not brilliant returns, but good returns. Good work in stock. Um, and now I think we start going downhill. But we'll see. Let's have a look what I got here. I had a pair of these this morning. Here will be a second. It's a pair of vases. But they were signed. I could see a signature, but I didn't want to pull my eyeglass out in front of the dealer to have a look who they were by. So bear with me a second. 
And I will tell you now. They are Edinburgh International, so Edinburgh Crystal, not the best uh, one, but Edinburgh Crystal, look at that, for a nice pair, they were a pound each. Real nice pair of vases actually, but they're for Edinburgh Crystal, again, another £15 for a pair of vases. I do a lot of crystal through the shop, especially at Christmas time, um, and it, at the moment I got a nice full cabinet of crystal, but I got no problems, and if I got in a room, I'll pack it up hoard this stuff because through the winter I can't buy it. So I'll buy as much crystal through the summer as I can and I will literally just save it until um, the winter time when I can't get none. I had three saucers which I think are early Chinese. So they I bought those just to go in my um, in my research pile. They look early Chinese to me. So, they were a pound for the three, so for a pound, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. It'll give me something to read for a few days, and I'll go from there. Uh, a nice little Phoenix Ware vase, mid-century. Nothing spectacular, guys. Um, it was three quid, it's going to go for a tenner. Again, um, I've got a hand-painted Chinese plate, there's a modern one. Uh, now I know why you're asking why am I buying a modern Chinese plate. Hang on. Oh. Um, as I've already said to you, I'm learning the Chinese porcelains, so I want the new examples, the older examples for comparison. Now I've just done the research on a pair of original plates, not this, this type, but original. Uh, from 1820, 1830. So it'll be nice now to be able to put a comparison side by side of a genuine one and a later copy. It has got the seal mark. Um, but we'll see. What do I think this one is? Don't think it's a brand new copy. But it's certainly 20th century. So, and it was a quid. So that again, it's not being sold, it's going in with my little job lots of Chinese pieces. Right, I got a lot of plates today guys, because uh, they were literally three for a pound. Julian just put a load of plates out on his three for a pound table, and to be honest with you, I couldn't really resist. I don't really sell plates that well, but I do have one woman who comes in buying plates, and at the car boot sales, I get three between three and five pound a plate. Uh, first one here we have Carlton Way. So you're talking it's probably a 1920s plate there, Carlton Way. You know, when you're paying 30 pence a plate, I'm, I'm you know, I know they're not the most saleable, but I'm not leaving them there. I really, I really ain't. We have a Royal Worcester Saint Nicholas. No, for 30 pence each. Anybody would be an idiot to just leave them there. You just can't do it. They're all perfect Washed up. I'll try them in the shop for a while and if they don't go I'll put them into uh, the boot. Royal Dalton, Royal Dalton Christmas Carol Royal Worcester 2014 calendar plate Anyone born on 2014? Nineteen eighty-seven Wedgwood Christmas pudding plate. So a couple of Christmas plates for there. This next piece is actually I rate for the shop thirty pence again. Now that isn't a plate; it's a base, a stand, 
Um, it's hand painted in enamel, thick enamel, and it is Fayence. Made in France, there we have the maker's mark. We have a nice bit of uh, antique Fayence. Alright, it's got loads of this crazing and staining. Um, and I may soak it in some bleach and water for a while and clean it up and get it looking really nice. But I actually like that one. That one should be £20-25 for that. There was a pair of plates down there this morning that I looked at and I thought, are they fans? Uh, there they are. I thought they got a look of fans about them. But they weren't fans. They were American pottery. There we go. And I'll show you the other now. And I had a quick little look online. I'll, um, I'll sh tell you what I found now. I think it was San, uh, San, uh, hang on, I'll have a look now on my phone, can't remember a minute. But they hand painted, well hand painted and transfer away, so a bit of both. I paid a pound each for them, uh, bear with me a second, get my photos. San Marino. That's where I found, and they are listed on Pinterest, which is uh, one of these antique sites that you join to find out what antiques are worth and what they sell for. Um, so, I thought, well, they were a pound each. If they're good enough to be listed individually on Pinterest, then they're good enough for me to buy it a pound each and see where they go. These phones really can make you a bit of money guys, all you got to do is literally, if you're unsure about something, just have a quick little search, it took me 30 seconds on my phone, and I decided yes, I was buying them. Two more plates, 30 pence each again, but these ones are a bit better. First we have is a hand painted Davenport plate, beautiful uh, Davenport one, beautiful porcelain. The next one is hand painted, let me take the auction sticker off a minute, uh, it's hand painted with a castle scene, it has a small chip to it, but it's a quality antique plate. That's a nice plate. It's got a little chip here with somebody's had on a plate wire, but it's all gilded all the way around. And this is all hand painted. So that's a nice little plate there. And for 30 pence, you know, somebody will still buy that off me for a tenner. So a lot of plates in again today. I know, I don't like plates myself. Another thing I don't like, but I've been asked to buy them, this is on special order, is a Wedgwood egg coddler. Now this one is an extra large, king size in fact. Um, but it's brand new mint in the box, new old stock, and I've been asked to buy it, so I don't know what I'm going to ask them for it yet, but it was 50 pence. So, for 50p, that's, um, you know, if I charge him a fiver or a tenner, because he asked me to bring him in. So we'll see. It comes to something when you're buying Royal Albert Old Country Rose, I know. Uh, but if it's what the public want, I've been asked to bring some Royal Albert in. So I picked that up this morning, it was a pound. It's in mint condition, guys. It's from Old Country Rose pattern, Royal Albert. Would I buy it normally? Would I help? With the shop and the public asking for certain things, if that's what they want, it's a tenner for a quid, they can have it. I don't care. Sometimes I think I'm too stuck up with the stock. I only like to buy the top names and the really nice pieces, but saleable stock is still stock. Now this piece here is Islamic, Isnik. Um, very interesting jug. It's hand painted. Um, and we have some script along here, which I'm going to try and translate later on and some more script underneath. 
Now, what does it say? I haven't got a foggiest idea yet. How old is it? Again, I haven't got a foggiest idea other than the 20th century. Um, but I do know this is Nick stuff, or, you know, this type of way does sell well. So, I'm going to have a little look, see what I can find out, see what it says, and you never know. I paid £3 as a gamble for that, but I actually quite liked it. So we'll see where we go with that, that's a mystery piece. I bought a present for... Sorry guys, camera cut me off there, I uh, ran out of uh, memory card. Uh, next piece, special order again. Um, I don't buy this type of stuff now, uh, but it is selling and these are special requests. They are cut crystal, they are probably 20s, 1900, 1920s, and they're knife rests. Now I've been asked for a pair of these in crystal, or cut glass. Um, they cost me a pound this morning and I'm going to charge a ten and she'll be in today for these. Um, so, you know, what more can I uh, do, like? I can't remember where the um, film cut out, uh, whether or not uh, you saw the present I bought for Sandra or not. I can't remember. So, just in case you didn't, I bought Sandra a mirror back glitter bathroom sign. Uh, that was 50p, just in case that cut off before I showed you that. Um, and I've had some coins, not the packs, some single coins. Uh, this one here is a little commemorative one, 1837 to 1897 Queen Victoria. But it advertises Morris Davies Nelson Carnarvon. Oh, if it's going to pick it up on the thing, I'll probably put a photo of this on at the end because the camera's it's no light. Hang on, see if I can solve that problem. There we go, a bit of light. So it's quite nice condition as well actually. So um, I paid £3 for that this morning. I'm going to chuck probably £14 or £15 on that. It's 1897. It's a really nice commemorative token and it'll go in my coin box. I've had a 1941 shilling. Now 1941 would be half silver, so half of that it would be silver. And that's going to go in my box for sale. And I've had a 1914 solid silver three pence, because it's pre-1921. Uh, it's been drilled, somebody's had in a bracelet, but you know what? I'll still chuck one or two quid on it, chuck it in my box and just forget about it. So, that's alright. Next piece I've got, guys, is a bit of Chinese silk work. Uh, it's modern. Don't think for one second it's not. It's uh, a beautiful little uh, stand. Um, so you've got a silk panel inside glass. Uh, this one's of the ship and sea. Now I've got a few of these. I've got one with a cat and, uh, and they always have feet. Now this one has lost its feet. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a hook this side, a hook that side and put a bit of a cord on it and have it as a hanging picture. And to be totally honest with you, it was a pound this morning. It's a signed piece of Chinese art. It's modern, but you know what? It's going to go for 20, 25 pound once I hang it. Once I put um, some screws in it to hang it. So, you know, it's good shop stock. It's not antique by any means. I love Oriental and Chinese anyway, but that's, you know, it is what it is. It's going to sell. Um, and for a quid, I'm not going to moan. That's about it guys, I think. Just double check now. Uh, yep, that's all she wrote. So, I don't know what you think. Um, obviously, the stars of the show was the Waterford and the early Chalice. Uh, the coins are okay. I'm happy with the coins. The rest of it is run-of-the-mill working stock. Nothing to jump up and down about. Um, but will it make me a profit? Yes, it will. It's not always about the star items. As I was trying to explain to Jeremy this morning, um, sometimes I'd rather buy this type of stuff because I know I can sell it without feeling conflicted. When I bought the painting last week, should I take it to Sotheby's, Christie's, Bonhams? Yes. Is it hanging on my wall? Yes. Did I put the teapot up for sale? No. 
Should I have? Yes. When I buy the pieces that are really nice, really rare, really valuable, I tend to put them in the house and I say, oh, I haven't got time to list them and they'll go online another day. And they will go online probably in a few years. But I tend to hoard the dearer, the better pieces and I sell the work in stock. So some days it's better for me to have the work in stock than it is to constantly have the pieces to hoard. Um, I, I know I'm a hoarder, but I'm a hoarder for investment. I do plan on selling everything I buy and I don't hoard rubbish. I only hoard the best, the finest pieces I can buy with my money. So all in all, I'm actually pretty pleased with the day. I got a couple of pieces of Chinese for a bit of research. Um, I've got some coins for my coin dealer. I've got a couple of pieces that I've been asked to get and I've got some work in stock. So all in all, it hasn't been a bad morning. And of course I've chatted to a few of the uh, my friends and uh, people I know down in Splot. So I'm happy enough. Nine o'clock's approaching. Um, I'm about to open up shop. Um, have a cup of tea and sit down and tidy up and clean and price and put the stock out. <laughs> it never ends, guys. Uh, well, I've been on the go since four o'clock this morning. Uh, coming up nine o'clock now, so I've already done five hours before most of you were getting up. Uh, I work in the shop all day till one, two o'clock today. Then I'll go home, I'll have the children, feed them, do other things. And then I'll do research tonight, cleaning, ready for the boot sale tomorrow. And I might get a bed by 10 o'clock tonight. If you think it's an easy life, <laughs> think again. It's a good one. I love what I do, but it isn't easy, guys. But would I advise anybody to do it? Yes, I would. It is a really wonderful um, thing to do. It's so rewarding when you go out and you've got a little bit of knowledge and you go into a box or what somebody else thinks is rubbish and you pull out something and you know, I'm going to get 100 quid for that. I'm going to get 200 pounds for that. Well, like last week, I bought that painting off a dealer for 30, 35 pounds and I'm going to get couple of thousand for it you know that's that's ooh, it just gives you that edge anyway I'm gonna leave it there guys got a bit of work to get on with now I want to have a cup of tea uh, maybe a sandwich because I am absolutely starving I was good today you'd be proud of me I didn't have a bacon sandwich on the burger van one one <laughs> so I'm gonna leave it there guys hopefully you've enjoyed having a look work in stock I know but hopefully you've enjoyed seeing it uh, if you have, I would appreciate a like and a share. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe, leave a comment and let me know you've subscribed. You'll find me on Facebook. I have a page and a group, Antiques Arena. You'll find me on my own website, antiquesarena.co.uk or antiquesarena.com. Or you can come to Mountain Ash and visit me in the shop. Antiques Arena, 78 Oxford Street, Mountain Ash, Charlie Fox Road, 45, 3 Hotel Bravo. Just before I say bye, guys, um, I reached over 1,300 subscribers yesterday. Big thank you to every single one of you. Bye for now.